So basically what we learned from Mishlei is, right, the Musar, but we said that what? That the one who gives the Musar, he has to believe in himself. The water has to be warm to warm up the Mikveh. If the water is not warm, it's not going back to Mikveh. So that's why it's, this is the reason why Noach wasn't successful. 120 years he was building the Teva and preaching, not even one convert. Because he himself, Rashi says, Ma'amin velo Ma'amin. If a person himself is not a Ma'amin, he doesn't believe in his, uh, in his message, he not, he's not going to get any converts. Did Hashem speak with him? Same question. Yes! But you know, looking at it, it's Dora Mabul. Dora Mabul, it's Dora Kfira and everything. So, I mean, uh, do we believe? <laughs> There's a famous story of Rabbi Sal Salanter. Rabbi Sal Salanter, it's uh, my Rosh Hashiva Zatzar of Rudiman, was just his your side. So he always used to say that. He said, like, you know, once somebody comes to Rabbi Sal Salanter and he says, Rabbi, I need, I have expenses, I'm marrying with my children, I don't have, I, I don't have money. Right? Could you, you know, give me a bracha to help me this and that? He says, look, go, go do, do this, go do this and that. I promise to you, Bezrat Hashem, Kodesh Baruch Rav, I want you to have full trust that Kodesh Baruch is going to send you the money that you want. He goes, comes back after uh, some time, says, Rabbi, nothing happened. He says, I'm telling you, do the effort guaranteed. You need, what, $20,000, whatever it is? It's going to come. Comes back, it doesn't happen. He says, he says you know what? I'm willing the twenty thousand dollars that when I promised you, I'll buy it from you cash ten thousand dollars now. Are you willing? He said yes. Give it to me. So you don't believe? It. Mm-hmm. If you really would have believed <laughs> that you're going to get in a few weeks twenty thousand, you wouldn't come to cash it for ten. That shows you you are uh, like uh, I, I believe. I believe there is believing and there is believing. So Noach was ma'amin uh, or ma'amin. It's not that he didn't man. He was he didn't believe ma'amin or ma'amin. Maybe, or maybe it could be if you wanted to done the kaf sechut. Maybe, maybe it's like uh, Hashem promised uh, Yaakov Avinu. Right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch you. So why was he scared of it? So he says maybe. Maybe garbu ma'asai. Maybe meanwhile, I, maybe at that point, at that point, I was. I deserve to be saved, but maybe, maybe I did something that I'm not, I don't deserve it anymore. <laughs> right? Maybe to be done like a zuchut, that's... Uh, that was the fact that you can get Eitah Lokim Italech Noach means that he leaned on Hashem and he walked. He wasn't, his emunah wasn't... Uh, Noach compared to Abraham, right? Avraham Avinu HaKadosh Baruch Hu tested him ten times. Why? Because Avraham Avinu Nashkan it's like you need Rushbegay. Let's go. I really didn't think uh, these Shalom Bayit uh, sessions are going to take so long. It's, I think, the fourth or the fifth. But, you know, it's going to take a few more sessions, Bezrat Hashem, for us to cover all the Ma'amare Hadrachal Chatanim Ve'adim Shenem Rubi Shivat Be'er Yaakov that Revolver, right, he used to give to to Chatanim B'nai Yeshiva that were about to get married. But we are all newlyweds and we could always Right, benefit from all the most beautiful musar that he gives us. So it says when the Malachim came to Avram Avinu, Shaluhu Right, they're talking just interesting about Avram Avinu. They asked the Malachim, where is where is where is Sarah your wife? So Amar of Yehuda ve'itamar b'itzchak yodim hayu malach asharet. But Malachim didn't know they didn't know where Sarah was. Yodim hayu malach asharet she Sarah imenu be'ohel ha'ita. Right. So so how come they asked him and Avram answered she's in the ohel lechabeva al ba'ala. They wanted to Avram Avinu to appreciate what a good wife he has, what a tzaddiket, sinua. That she's in the ohel, she's in the tent. So you see, hadavar mufla, right? 
‫כי אם you could understand, ‫מרקדים לפני הכלה לחבבה על בעלה, ‫לגמרא זה כיצד מרקדים לפני הכלה, ‫right, all of the things, ‫it's from the גמרא. ‫that you want to, like, you know, ‫you dance in front of the כלה, ‫גדולים, לחבבה על בעלה. ‫that you know, he's, the chatan says, ‫וואו, why, what a, I have such a nice, ‫beautiful wife that when everybody's coming ‫and dancing, ‫it doesn't rush a yeshiva in front of her. So we could understand that you want to be mechabev ishal ba'ala newlyweds. Here, how old was Modam Musiyu? They were Avram Avinu, Avram and Sarah. At this point when the Malachim came, Avram Avinu is 99 years, years old. Sarah is 90 years old. They have been uh, married to each other also for a whole century. And still, still at that point, with what it says, lechabev ishal ba'ala. ניחא, איך מה שייך אצל האבות הקדושים? אני יותר גדול, אבות הקדושים זה אברהם, יצחק, יעני יעקב, הנה קדושי עליון. Even in that kind of relationship and marriage of אברהם and Sarah, after a whole century, you see the מלאכים come to do what? לחבב אישה על בעלה. To bring, like you know, about the love of, of a husband and wife. But we see, at the same time, when הקדוש ברוך הוא, השם is משנה. Right, Hashem, you know, when, uh, when uh, Sarah, Sarah Imenu, when, when she laughs, so, because, and she says, Va'adoniza Ken, that Avram is an old man, Hashem changed Sarah's word. Hashem, kivyachol, kivyachol, Hashem lied. <laughs> Sarah never said that she is old. She said, Avram is old. Hashem changed and said, no, 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 why Sarah said that she is old? Why? HaKadosh Baruch Hu, she not changed it in order not to Chas v'chalila cause a thing in Shalom Bayit between Sarah and uh, Avraham Avinu when after a whole life of living together. What do we see? Mikan ki inyan ribuy ha-chibuv tzorech hu kol yemei chayeh ha-zug ad noa v'esir. That you know, there is a need to work on Shalom Bayit and in a DC and chibuv this is like to bring about like this love and affection between husband and wife ad noa v'esir. And even for Avram, Darbot HaKedusha, Adavot, we're talking about Avram and Sarah. So we have to know, right? we have to know that marriage, you see, they say, they say, like, they say that the marriage is compared to Kriyat Yamsuf. Kriyat Yamsuf, the miracle wasn't the one-time thing that the water split. Right, because that, that happens. Sometimes we have very strong winds, and it really it's like splits the splits the ocean. It, it, you know, it splits the ocean. But the miracle was keeping keeping those walls of water intact for everybody to pass. The same thing is when you said that the zivug is kashekariyat yamsuf. It's the continuity. It's not just the one right act of like you know bringing them together. So we have to, and, and what's the purpose of the Meir? that the Torah of Ratzon Tishrei Chaviyut Chatshut Ben Ish Ve'isha, right? You see, the Gemara tells us, what's the, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this is, I think, end of the third parak, I think, if I'm not mistaken, from Daf Yomi, from Masachet Nida, right? It says, Mepine Ma Amra Torah Nida Leshiva, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu give the Halachot of Nida? Why? Why these days of separation between husband and wife? Mipenei ma? Amra Torah nidal shiva mipenei sheragil ba vakatsva. Rabbi Meir says because if he's always with her, right, he's going to be disgusted with her. He's going to get used to her and he's not going to appreciate her. The separation, what they say, makes the hearts... Grow fonder. Distance makes the hearts grow fonder. That's right. Distance makes the heart grow Go find there. This is what Rabbi Meir says. That this separation of the days of Nida, it, 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 the purpose is lechabem yishal ba'ala till forever and ever. It's like, you know, you, you find like in a jar of honey. If you empty it in your mouth, you're going to be disgusted to, for, with, with, with honey forever and ever. But when it's eaten in moderation, you look forward to it. So this is the this is same, same message. So it is this chibuv. So Rabbi Meir is t- saying that, that you know, our marriages need renovation, so to speak. Need constant 
maintenance. Because he says it has to be like the first time that they are together. That freshness and that the same way like, you know, uh, from a uh, couple like, you know, they're Shomer Negea, they're looking forward for the first touch, so to speak. This needs to be recycled every cycle, right? That separation brings that chiba and that looking forward to, right? So, and, 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 um, and Rav Volbe says, Ein davar yoter mesukan l'shalom habayit ma'ashel ha-shikra. Shigra means uh, man, uh, become, it becomes mundane. Shigra is like you know, something that you, you do out of a rock. That there's, it needs to be renovated. You need, you need some, you need to be uh, energized, right? Harbe ozeret lano hatora, bazem shilot istareb, right? And 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 he says that's the re- really one of the purposes of 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 observing the halachot. Of Taharat Mishpacha and Chod and Chod Nidei, it's exactly this: that it's not something that you know, just a rot that you just continue, right? It's that separation. That separation. The idea is that you know, there is. A, it's a new, and it also has to do, you know, has to do with the moon. When the moon is like renewed, the cycle. That's why you know one of the things of Chod Nidei is that some ladies their uh, uh, their period. It really depends on the day of the of the month. Right. Some, you know, most mostly it's not like that, that they are. That's, la- that's why, like, you know, when we count the days of, separa- of, of separation, we have Onabe Nonit, we have uh, 30 days, and then we have, we have Veset, and what is Yom Chodesh? Yom Chodesh, the day of the Hebrew month, it's one of the suspicious dates, uh, where, you know, you know, they hold it down. So he says the whole purpose is like this, that it's not just one continuum, that there is a, it's like, you know, there is a renewal, there is a new cycle. So, and he says, it's not just, he says, we have to know, chatunam eina meora chat ba'ami. Right, he says, chatuna, it's a one, it's not, it's a continuous thing. Chatuna. It's like in some cultures, some, you know, I know my, uh, my, my mother always called my father Dumat. So you're, you're, you're Dumat the whole uh, life. <laughs> it's not just, uh, you know. So I, they, they, my father, they would call him, or my, even my family, they would call him, uh, my, mother, my mother's family, they would call him Meshe Dumat. Meshe is Moshe. I mean, the Kermun is the, sort of like the Ashkenazim also, Meshe, Meshe, me. <laughs> Meshe Dumat, uh, you know, you know Rabbi Moshe Dumat. Yeah. Always. I think maybe in other cultures also. So that's what he says. We have to really know that chatuna is it's chatuna kinyan nimshach. It's continuous. It's not like you know, once, right? So mahayom v'ad me'avesrim, ad ad me'avesrim. So and, and and really every every cycle of like you know, going to mikveh, it's like a total renewal. It's like a new chatuna. It's a new. That's what Rabbi Meir says. Rabbi Meir says that, you know, the uh, observing Kilchot Nida is to guarantee that they get married, they become Chatan and Kala every month. He says that's the idea, that it should be fresh and something we look forward to, like, like the first time, he says, right? So he says, Harei be'ofen tiv'i, right? Cholfot t'kufot ha'chayim ve'en makom l'shigra b'bayit. I mean, obviously, there is no there is no mundane, like you know, you see, always you have changes in the cycle of marriage, right? First you have a chod nida, and then you know, then you become Bezrat uh, Hashem, you, you have children, and then you have grandchildren, and you become grandparents. It's not uh, uh, monotonous, right? It's something like, you know, it's, uh, it, there, are, there are changes. And he says it's very healthy, right? Kizot anunu lodat hazivuk, right? Hu si shelakirwa. And he says, he makes a, since we're talking about the beauty of, of observing in Chot Nida, right, what it does for Shalom Bayit, it's really, you know, observing in Chot Nida properly has, I always talk to Chatanim, it has different purposes. One is, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, as, as we said, what Rabbi Meir says, one purpose of observing Yilchot Nida is what Rabbi Meir said. 
Why? Rabbi Meir says clearly, why Hashem? For what? He says to ensure that they don't take each, each other for granted. When for certain days you cannot even touch, even a touch becomes something out of this world. Right? That's one. Aside from that, Chachamim tell us, observing Gilchot Midei is there for, to guarantee the proper kavod and status of the woman. That God forbid she does not become a sex object. Right? That you, there's a person that, that you need to relate to, right? In a, in a, to, to relate, even if even you cannot get physical. Fortunately, this is not what Hollywood teaches you. Hollywood makes, uh, makes from ladies. It's like it's, it's a sex object. Right. So, so you see, that's why in the Chazon is what they call the Israelis go lasot chayim, go live it out. We call it karet, and it's not the opposite of you know. But we have to real. So, so, so this, this is another, right? It's another reason for observing and elchod nida aside from what Rabbi Meir said that you know, that bring that that, that attraction between husband and wife, it's forever, right? It's also, right, I mean, it's known that, you know, couples that observe the Chod Nidah, they, uh, they could function in that intimate way for a much, much longer time, right? It's, it's, it's a, that's what uh, Rambam says. Rambam says that, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of sicknesses, Rambam says most of the sicknesses come because of overdoing in eating and over activity in the intimate intimate relationship. Right? It says most of diseases, he was a doctor. Right? So it has a lot of different, right, you know, uh, finite has been proven also medically that, you know, the, the Torah way of uh, intimacy, it's the healthiest. Right? Couples that observe in Chot Mida, a lot of diseases that uh, you cannot find. I mean, you have done researches on this. The, the research at Johns Hopkins University did research among Orthodox couples in, in, in Baltimore, and also Hadassah Hospital did in Israel. It's beyond any doubt. Dr. Shosham, there is a famous doctor in Israel, he wrote a book on this, that, that beyond any doubts that this is a healthy lifestyle. Also, he says, but kizot alenu ladat, and this is very, very important. What uh, what Rav Volbe says in this point, at this, you know, he says, hazivug hu si shel kirva. He says intimacy is the climax of getting close to each other. Aval kol si kodemet lo hit patchut at shemagim elav. You wanna you wanna climb on the Everest mountain? Wow! You have to go a long way. Till you reach that 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 peak, kirva gufanit beli kirva nafshit maaliva et aisha. Rav Volbe says, intimacy without right. If it's just a physical thing like animals, God forbid, he says it's very insulting to a woman. Ein hashel isha baalat rama davka el kirva nafshit. So you have to really, you know, you know, ladies, more, it, it's not just a physical, for them, the emotional closeness is much more meaningful than the physical. Obviously, the Gemara says the ladies have even more uh, desire than men. But you see, he says that, that comes to them from what? Mostly from the emotional closeness that intimacy brings, right? The yachas, Shel simat lev or hevet, right? A person cannot expect, like, you know, he comes and he, like, you know, disrespects his, his wife, this and that, and then to expect her to be intimate with him, right? It's asur like that. Mamash, it's asur. He's saying that what? It has to be an expression of love. The like Gemara says, the Gemara says, like, we have to learn from a rooster. First, the rooster, right? Comes and we spoke about this, like you know, shows his love and affection, this and that. I'm going to get you this and that, whatever, and then, right? They are intimate. So the yachas shel simat lev ohevet. In yesh yachas kaze, if if it's if if the husband really shows that love and affection, see a lot of times you know I talk to couples, they have problems in that area, 
Oh, she never did. Uh, she, 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 she was headaches and this and that, right? Not interested. If there is such a thing, it's really it's, it's the husband's fault. Because the Gemara says, the Gemara says the desire for intimacy in ladies is stronger than men. But, as Rav Wilber says, you want it as a climax, but you know you have, there is a way to, to get to that climax, the preparations, right? So he says, Attention, right? That's why in a lot of times they say, like, you know, when she, you're supposed to go to Mikveh, like, you know, maybe they need to get some flowers, these, that, I mean, to do some, some preparations. It's, you know, by her, the main thing is the emotional. But then, yes, then it's going to be physical as well. The kirvat dat amiti, but if the husband does not really show love and affection to his wife, im ein ba'alam megalik. If he does not reveal it, and a lot of uh, Persian men they have uh, problems saying I love you, etc. We know that. So he soledet mamosh mahaziluk agufani. Then she's going to be disgusted with the physical intimacy. That's the, I'm translating what he says. Kirva gufanit. Because if it's not an expression of love and emotion, so then it's insulting to her. I've heard it so many times. Right? See, you know, this, this, this is exactly what he's saying. It's going to be painful, right? So he says, Yilmad kol avrech kol chatan. Devarim ele besimat lev. Every chatan has to learn this with attention. Ki hem hem yesuda shel chayei ishud. He says this is the foundation of chayei ishud. Is the, the intimate relationship. Right. My father is the Racha, used to say always shall invite problems. Start from the bedroom. He was saying. If the bedroom situation is what it's supposed to be, right, it's a different ball game. If, if, if the bedroom situation is not what Hashem had in mind, that it, it should be very strong, and, 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 and this is the recipe, it has to be an expression of love. If, that, if the bedroom situation is no good, all of a sudden the house is too small, the car is too old, oh, okay, you're going to have problems all over. <laughs> right? I mean, I, a lot of times when people come to me with children and buy problems, I say, they really, excuse me, but you know, I, I have to ask you, how is the intimate relationship? Right? If, they're, you know, if, if the, the problems really start, a lot of them, I can't blame everything on that. It's so, so important that intimate relationship should be the way Rabbi Meir says. The mayor says the idea is that you know this separation is to create more chiba, right? And it has to be an area that is totally taboo that nobody blackmails, not the husband blackmails his wife. And I've had cases like that a, pl- a plenty. The mother and be it Rami Karde, and so Zanemi of Yer after Mikve, I say Malam Nikon. It's a big insult. Chera Alam and the mother is be it Rami Karde. I mean, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. It has to be an area that it's taboo. No matter what, whatever fights there, anything that they have should be resolved. And this should never be become, you should not blackmail each other on, on something that it's a, it's a gift. It's a gift that really is, as he's saying, this is fundamental for Be'ezrat Hashem, for a successful marriage. Okay, questions? Everything is clear. Exactly. <laughs> yes. This is being recorded, no. <laughs> oh, okay. The mind of the husband and the wife has to be clear before the intimacy can take place. So in your example, uh, where the husband said that, uh, you know, his, his wife was uh, disrespectful to... To his mother. His mother. So that should be solved before intimacy. Def- that should be resolved before she has to go to mikveh. I mean, she should not blackmail him because of this, but you know, it's, it's, you know they need to resolve every- this, that area is Kodesh HaKodeshi. 
whatever issues are there need to be resolved. I mean, really, we spoke about this before. Issues should be resolved before you go to sleep. Every night, whether or not it's a time of intimacy or not. It should not, you know, they should not get it prolonged, right? Things need, you know, to communicate. Communicate in a respectful manner anything and everything. Kavod, that's why Rambam, you know, emphasizes Kavod more than anything else. Parde hormat Honey, this thing, you know, if the woman is insulted, say, look, you know, this thing that, you know, your mother said, it insulted me. Right? And, 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 it's, and, and a lot of times it's not really, husbands don't have really control over it. I've been in many, you know, I'm going to Great Neck, I, I had this thing, you know, I don't want to go to details. But there was, there was, a, the, 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 sometimes you have mother in that are very, very, very vicious. Right, and, he said, and, and the husband cannot side uh, with, with his mother. Oh, it's Kibudova. No, it's not Kibudova. You cannot, you know, she can, if, if, if she's wrong, she's wrong. So, but whatever the issues need to be discussed, analyzed, and, uh, you know, that this, but this area of intimacy should not be a bargaining chip and to blackmail each other. Okay.